Bill, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thanks, Dana. So I hope you're all doing well today. And the lab you're in right now in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is the Higgins Materials Lab. And a lot of interesting things happen in here. As a first year student, you take a really important class called materials. And if you think about civil engineering and materials, some things probably come to mind. Steel, concrete, wood, composites, aluminum. I'm holding in my hand a steel coupon that the students broke a few weeks ago. And <clears throat> you spend about eight weeks of that first semester taking labs in here while you simultaneously take a class. You learn the theory in the class, you learn how things behave in here. I got a couple of folks in here today. Chenny Rofus is over there. She's the instructor for materials. Every one of our labs is taught by an instructor, but we've got support from TAs. We've got a couple of our teaching assistants here. In fact, the only reason we don't have students in here right now is because it's a holiday week, so we don't have labs. However, they're getting set up for what we'll be doing in the next couple of weeks, and I'm gonna let Chenya say a few words about that. Well, let's just start by maybe talking about what we just did. So we actually just tested FRP, and we are basically trying to tell, uh, show the students that FRP is a uh, non-homogeneous material, and it has different properties in the different directions, the y-axis and the x-axis, and um, I actually have it set up. This we just did that last week, like last Thursday. Um, so we actually have the specimen right here, and I actually preloaded it to 10,000 pounds. And basically, the students uh, take measurements of the specimens. We have a strainometer right here that we actually can measure strain directly. We actually installed it in here. I'm not going to install it because that specimen has 10,000 pounds at the moment. Um, but let's. Let's actually um, see how it behaves uh, under load. So I'm gonna start it. And hopefully it will work. It's actually, it should be pretty linear. Um, and it should fail any time. And actually it just failed. But if we just wait a little bit, it will actually fall rupture. What you're hearing right now is the failure of individual fibers in that piece of FRP. So this FRP is actually in the longitudinal direction, so it actually um, it actually is in the stronger direction, and I'm going to show you how the fibers are all oriented in that direction. So once it fails, we can actually loosen the specimen. And this, by the way, is a tension test. We were pulling the specimen, and we actually can see how the, most of the fibers are in that direction, and the students get to actually, uh, well, I basically show them that the FRP in this, uh, in this setup, it actually has like five layers, and two of the layers um, have all the fibers in the longitudinal direction. All right, and then next week, so this is what we just did, and then next week, uh, we're actually going to be uh, testing wood, and again, we show uh, the students how wood has different properties in the longitudinal axis than in the transverse axis. So we actually test. One of the tests that we're gonna do with this one, I'm just gonna set it up. But basically we put, this is a, an extensometer, just the same as for the other one, but this is actually non-digital. So the students get um, involved with uh, taking readings with dial gauges, which is old fashioned, but it's also good to understand how they work. So this one we would test it like this, and we always have to, this is actually a compression test, so we would um, always, um, basically we always have to apply a preload in our test. So we always have to apply a preload, and usually for this test, it's about 200 uh, pounds, 250. And then we would actually, um, basically the, the, the instrument would actually be moving downwards and it would actually, we would actually crush it. But, um, so that would be in the longitudinal direction. And then if, when we do it in the transverse direction, what we do is we actually put the specimen sideways because it actually is a lot weaker in the transverse direction. And we end up having to put a plate because it's a lot easier to find the area of a square than a circle. So we would do the same thing. We would basically set it up all the way to the top of the plate. And actually, I might have to move this a little bit. And 
And if we want to, we could actually test this one in that direction. Uh, to see how it uh, behaves. Uh, is this set up, has this been set up in, for the wood compression? Perpendicular. Perpendicular, okay. So we always have different methods. So we would apply a preload again of about 200 pounds. We would actually reset the gauge length or the extension and we would actually test it. And what I really show the students again is that at the beginning it's not linear, but you can see how we're taking data. I'm actually giving data from the machines and they need to do stress strain plots. Um, so it's usually wood is actually linear to a certain point and the very last point of its linearity is what we call the proportional limit. And it's basically an important property that is documented um, for wood perpendicular to grain. So it's still being loaded, we actually stop it uh, by deformation. We go, we basically go, um, we strain it about 10%, but this is not a very exciting test because it's in compression. We just basically indent the plate into uh, our specimen. But you can see how it has yielded. And you see that little kink over there? That's what we call the proportional limit. And then we, ha we have finally failed it. So then I usually just stop the test right here. And when we actually when we actually look at the failure, it's not very exciting because you can just see it's basically failure right there formation. Like you can just basically see a little bit of indentations, but that's all they get to see on that one. On the other one, for the perpendicular, it does splinter, uh, but I don't have capacity on this machine to do that one. All right. Thanks a lot, Chenya. You're welcome. So we'll keep on setting up our yeah, specimens. Up for, uh, next week's lab. Okay. And we're going to make our way down the hall. One thing I want to point out when we leave, <clears throat> I said when you came in, it was the Higgins Materials Lab. It's the Rich and Gene Higgins Materials Lab. And this plaque's here for a very good reason. This is an endowed lab. Rich was an alum of our program and very generous one. And in fact, all of our undergraduate teaching labs are endowed. And this is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, it shows us how connected our alums are to our program. And that's vitally important for, our, for us. Second, it's a really interesting story. When Rich retired, he was vice president of the Americas at Boeing Corporation, the largest airplane manufacturer in the world. And you don't normally associate civil engineering with aircraft. On the other hand, it's a great example of where an engineering degree can take you. And uh, you know, if you're a senior vice president at the Boeing Corporation, you've done really well for yourself, and the foundations for that were laid here in the civil engineering department at UMaine.